Hey everyone, uh, Dr. McClellan again. Uh, thank you for uh, coming back and watching uh, the channel. I want to start a series. I started it with Dr. Barry last year at ASPS, where we talk to plastic surgeons about different topics. How do you get into plastic surgery? What do you like about plastic surgery? What's the future? What's the difference between academic and uh, private? Uh, academic versus private practice? Pros and cons, etc. To help younger people that are interested in the specialty determine their, their pathways forward. Um, I always love plastic surgery because it's so diverse. There are lots of different things to do within plastic surgery and lots of challenges, different challenges. And uh, I wanted to, the only way to tell that is to share the stories of different people within the specialty. And so I, I started that with Dr. Barry last year, and I'm going to really focus on that uh, this year because I think it, it brings a lot of, uh, good content to the people that are interested. And I, I want to start off with Dr. Travis Miller, who's a resident at Stanford. Great guy. And I really hope you uh, like this video and um, in the future videos. If you have any questions for uh, Dr. Miller, please leave a comment below. As always, thank you very much for watching and participating in the channel. Thank you. Everyone, I'd like to introduce you to Travis Miller. Uh, Travis is an all-star resident in plastic surgery at Stanford University. Um, this is our second go-round of a conversation because I screwed up the first one. But thank Travis, thank you so much for joining us. Um, sure. You know, my, uh, a little bit about my channel. If you if you haven't seen it, I like to educate people about plastic surgery, uh, mainly from a surgical standpoint. But I also like to a lot of residents and medical students follow the channel. Uh, and, and I want to help students know a little bit more about plastic surgery, like the real plastic surgery, not what you see on TV. And how, how can they get more experience in plastic surgery? And then it's a very challenging match. How can they improve their chances of matching in plastic surgery? The second aspect from a resident standpoint, uh, you know, I know you, you're, you're a fabulous resident and an all-star. How can residents that, that are in their programs, how can they kind of maximize, um, you know, their, their training? But uh, please, you know, t my first question uh, would be, uh, you know, how did you get into plastic surgery? What kind of made you choose it as a specialty? And I'll, I'll let you go from there. Sure. No, no, thanks again for having me, Tom. No, it's such a such a privilege to be able to come on your channel and share my experience as a resident, and then just try to to help and reach out and really try to get people energized into plastic surgery um, to keep our field going strong, uh, getting the best people to apply and join us in what I think is a great career. Um, and to answer your question, uh, I went to med school because I. I was interested in the sciences, and I tried working in a basic science lab, and I didn't feel like it was for me. I really wanted to see people every day, really feel like I was helping people on, on a granular basis. Um, and so that's why I ended up going to medical school. I actually thought I was going to be a pediatrician or a, uh, a general medicine practitioner, uh, practitioner, but then I had a lecture by Jeff Kinkle, who's the chair at UT Southwestern and he showed us this amazing anatomy lecture where he prefabricated an ear and someone's forehead and then flipped that down. I just thought that was wow. super cool. Um, and so that got me interested. I started doing research with him. Um, and I, you still never really know if you want to do something procedural until you kind of get your hands dirty during your, um, uh, your clinical rotations. So I kind of kept my, my mind open, but then I ended up doing my surgery rotation, I ended up doing plastic surgery, um, uh, the plastic surgery rotation at UT Southwestern. I just loved it. Um, and I think it's, it's a career where you really get to operate from head to toe, really get to um, apply principles all throughout the body, and you end up making people's lives better. And so that's what really drew me to the field. Um, what, you hit on some great points there. Everyone has like that sentinel moment in, in, in surgery when you rotate on different specialties. And um, <coughs> one of the things that I really noticed about plastic surgery, maybe you had the same experiences, I seem to fit in with the guys or, and girls much better than other specialties. Uh, mm -hmm. you, you know, uh, they, were, they were thinkers and puzzle solvers. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, did you get that same experience? Yeah, definitely. I think I think your personality and where your personality fits is definitely a big factor in what you choose to do. And what I really liked about plastic surgery was, you know, even though you're operating late, um, you're doing these really challenging cases, often you're helping out other surgeons. So you're following them after they do uh, the ablation, you have to do the head and neck flap, 
or if they just did open heart surgery, couldn't get the chest closed, and they need your help closing. Often you're the, the last person to be there. Yeah. Um, but the, my residents uh, that I worked with and my attendings, they're always so pleasant. Yeah. It's like even though they were maybe doing some, sometimes what it seemed like the hardest job in the hospital, they were always very welcoming, very interested in teaching. Positive they just wanted to show me, Yeah, they just wanted to show me the cool things that they were doing. Yeah. Um, and so I think working with people that are friendly, engaging, um, people that you feel like you mesh with, um, that's, that's really important to find when you're looking for a specialty. Yeah, that's great. Some of the students that are out there that want to go into plastic surgery – you know, um, th there's an article that I'll link below that kind of goes over what are the things that plastic surgery programs are looking at. Um, having been a multi years at, at Stanford and, and being through the process of looking at med students, rotating as well as interviewing, what are some of the things that you think students can do to improve their overall uh, pro uh, profile? Sure. Yeah, so, so we actually just had our Stanford interviews. So it's uh, it's good that you asked that question because we actually just went through the process. Oh, um, I remember when I was applying to plastic surgery, uh, Jeff Kinkle was my main mentor, and he told me this. It's like if you have good grades, if you have good, bo if you have good board scores, then the rest of it can be can be more easy. Um, I think it's I think it's true that often when we're looking at applicants, like everyone's got great grades, everyone's got great scores, everyone's got a ton of research right. um, published, they presented all over the country. Uh, but those are really the first steps that you have to, to meet. Um, so especially for early medical students, I would just recommend really take your classes really seriously, take the boards, uh, including step one, very seriously, because um, you don't want those to be a limiting factor in your application. And then after that, I think once you um, have proven that you're, you can be a good doctor, you can um, uh, apply what you've read in a book and remember it and show that on a test, then I think it's that's the time to develop your research. Um, try to get involved in projects that interest you. Try to get publications. Try to go to conferences. Um, it's interesting how um, what a small field it is, um, that there's all these names in plastic surgery. We look over their recommendation letters, and it's the yeah. same people every year. It's like, oh, we see Joe Losey here. We see Serletti here. We see Chang here. We see Rorick here. And it's it's really we, we see those names and it's like, oh, like what does that person think of this yeah. applicant? And, and I um, think that from, from that standpoint, even if your local plastic surgeon is not nationally known, it's a very mm -hmm. small community. And you're right. five degrees of separation. And although they may not be nationally known, they may know right. someone to, at a program that you're applying to. And so getting mm -hmm. a, exactly. a good letter from, from your home-based plastic surgeon I think would be very important on your point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's. I think that can't be understated. It's such a small field, and there's so many interconnections. I mean, even when we met in Washington, Tom, it was you knew Dr. Momeni here. You would met Dr. Chang before. It's right. just amazing. Yeah. It's like all the way across the country. Yeah. So it really is a very inclusive field, um, and there's a lot of communication between plastic surgeons. And so for medical students, I would just say try to get exposure to the field. Once you once you've decided like this is what I want to do, yeah. just try to get involved with projects, try to go to meetings, and just try to meet people. Yeah. And I think it. You know, just let your personality stand out, and then those interconnections can really pay off. Uh, what are what are some of your favorite things about plastic surgery as a field? Sure. Yeah, I think um, I think what really attracted me to the field was the, the complexity of what you can achieve in plastic surgery, like the, the very complex reconstructions and trying to restore anatomy and function. Though I think the reason why I continue to love plastic surgery is a bit different than my what I initially chose. Um, like what I really like about plastic surgery now is that you identify a problem that the patient sees or that a patient has in their life, and then you're really working to improve the patient's quality of life. Um, I really enjoyed my general surgery rotations. Yeah. Um, we definitely have been involved in cases where it either saved the patient's life or uh, prevented, them, prevented them from losing their leg or some other uh, significant morbidity. Uh, but sometimes to, to save a patient's life, you have to take out a lot of bowel or you have to, uh, you have to do an amputation. Um, and it means sometimes decreasing a patient's function. Right. What I liked about plastic surgery is that it's always, you see a goal that the patient wants and you help them achieve that goal. So I, I, I appreciate now that it's more of a quality of life specialty than a life-saving specialty in, in, in most situations. And so that's what I really like is working with the patient and helping them achieve a goal that they see in their mind. Yeah. I want to get back to, uh, cause I, I, I know we, we defer vest, but research. I know that you're very research oriented. Uh, I performed a lot of research, uh, but it was not really in plastic surgery before I got into plastic surgery. And, and I don't think it's important what you do, but just that you show interest. Um, what, what are your thoughts on research and with applicants? 
Sure. I think it's I think it's something that we always look for every year. The applicants. I think it's it's certainly possible that we have applicants who did no research, um, but then they have to have something else that kind of helps them stand out on their application. I, and I think you touched on it. It's we're not necessarily looking for people who have published a lot in plastic surgery. Um, we certainly have applicants who thought that they were going to go into general surgery or psych or anything else. And maybe they, um, didn't start in plastic surgery and they didn't finish a project in plastic surgery. And that's totally fine. But we do look for people that have an academic interest yeah. or somehow want to like add back to the field, right. both learning from learning to be a plastic surgeon and also wanting to add back to the body of knowledge uh, that overall helps all of our patients. Mm, that's great. What do you, um, I know that you're part of the, the Stanford has a new seven year program versus six years and you're taking mm -hmm. that year off. What are your thoughts mm -hmm. about the extra year in plastic surgery? How did you use it? And, and mm -hmm. will it, uh, do you think that that will help you or, or make you interested in a fellowship after plastic surgery? Cause there, there are mm -hmm. a lot of fellowships after plastic surgery that are really exciting, but you're mm -hmm. kind of like your, uh, input on that extra year. Sure. No, I think it's. I think when you look at programs and they have an extra year uh, to either do research or have professional development time, I think that can be seen as either a plus or a minus. Definitely, if you want to get through training and get out into practice, uh, then yeah, then an extra year may not be for you. Uh, but in my case, um, I worked at the Bunky Clinic um, and I both took call with them, putting on uh, fingers that uh, fingers that were cut off or and doing free flaps, uh, as well as uh, doing clinical research with them. I have to say that it really is the best professional year of my life so far, oh, wow, uh, just great. because it really helped me find what I was interested in. Yeah. And helped me, uh, really narrow in like, wow, this is, this is what I want to do. This is what, um, this is what I love to do. This is what gets me up out of bed in the morning, excited to go to work. Um, and it's, it's amazing how after spending that year, how it's affected me now. Um, I actually just went to the microsurgery meeting uh, a couple of weeks ago and saw my old mentors and was, were interacting with, um, uh, the other microsurgeons. And it's just, um, the opportunities that that year gave me or something or things that I never saw throughout the rest of residency training. And so actually looking, looking back and spending that year, it's not something I regret at all. Oh, um, funny. I think it's really helped me focus my interests and really helped me, uh, decide what to do with the rest of my career. Um, and yeah. And so now after that year, I'm, I'm really interested in hand I'm planning to apply yeah. to a hand fellowship. Nice. Um, and yeah, I want to do. Yeah. <laughs> nice. <laughs> which, we, which we talked because. Tom is also trained in hand. I'm not sure. Uh, I, um, no, so. I absolutely love my hand microsurgery fellowship. Um, it, it was one of the best years I've ever had. It makes me very comfortable in hand. I highly recommend it. I mean, you, you, Bunky Clank is one of the best in the world. I mean, the experience you've had. Um, it, I, I, that's really exciting for you to hear. Um, like you, I'm really into research. And I'm, I'm into creating new things, studying that, and presenting. Um, and, you know, you're at the tip of the spear at, of research institutions and, 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 and really in the height of your career. What do you think is the future of plastic surgery? Where are we going? What are some of the cool things that you're doing in the lab uh, that, that you're able to share with us? Um, what are your thoughts on, on that, the future? Sure. I mean, I think it's, it's such an interesting question. because You know, it's, um, you never really know what's going to come next. I think when people started doing free flaps or when, when Harry Bunky was like experimenting on rabbit ears, that was like something that really changed the field. Um, and so I'm really interested to see like what is going to be the next thing. Um, I think one of the things that Stanford is working on, it's not something I'm personally involved with, is tissue engineering. Yeah. Um, for instance, like can you can you grow a liver in the lab and then put it in? Or if you, if you take like a, a deep flap, which is an abdominal tissue flap, because uh, some of the viewers don't know, can you inject liver cells into those flaps or engineer liver cells from the patient's uh, cells and then use kind of like um, plastic surgery principles to bring that tissue back into the body? Um, definitely, um, there's a lot of interesting research going on with uh, vascularized composite allografts, uh, prosthetics. Um, some of that's going on at Stanford, some of that's going on at other institutions. Mm -hmm. I think just seeing um, what's going to happen with that is going to be very interesting. Well, that's great. Well, Travis, I won't take up any more of your time. I know you're very busy. I very much appreciate you shooting the video and talking with some of our viewers. Um, I think having the perspective of someone who is uh, kind of more than 50% through training but is one of the best programs in the world and some of the things that you had to do to get there is very interesting to people. Uh, as always, I really, really appreciate it, and thank you very much. 
Sure, no problem. No, it's an absolute pleasure, Tom. And then if you have any viewers that want to contact me or have personal questions for me, feel free to give out my email. I'm happy to happy to help anyone along that's interested in plastic surgery. I definitely will not give out your email, <laughs> but I'll work, <laughs> I'll work out some way for someone to get a hold of you. I appreciate it. Thanks, Travis, so much. Have All a great right, night. Man.